Welcome, welcome. Hey, Carissa. Hey, Barb, I see you're on there. Linda, thanks for coming. Glad you guys are here today. We're just gonna wait for a while to allow some more people to get on here. Thelma, good to see you. Glad that you guys are here. Hey, <laughs> I appreciate the comment. Hey Marie, glad that you're on. Good to see you. Got a few people on here, getting more. <laughs> You too, Linda, I'm sure. I can't see you, but I'm I'm positive about it. <laughs> you looked good last week. I watched your, your live stream. I'm glad that they that they redid the piano thing, because I was looking forward to hearing you. <laughs> Hi Susan. Hi Kathy. Glad you guys are on. <laughs> Hi Aunt Lynn, glad that you're on. Hopefully I've got a Couple family members out there. Well, I'm glad you you all are here today. But uh, I mentioned to some of the first people we do want to give um, a little bit of time to to allow some other people to to get on and, and find the live stream and get on Facebook so they can join us for the devotional. For those of you that are here, uh, thanks again for coming. Hope they, I hope that you guys are all staying uh, happy and healthy and you guys are finding some interesting things to do with your time. I know this, um, this whole quarantine thing is, it, it's, it's definitely different and definitely difficult. Um, but hopefully you guys are, are finding some ways to spend your time. Hopefully you see it as, as an opportunity to, um, to try some new things. Maybe you have, you have some time on your hands and you want to try some other stuff. If, if at this point in the quarantine, you, you haven't thought of of anything to do. Uh, first of all, I, I greatly pity you. You've had a, a rough month. I will try to, to make our devotional day as entertaining as possible So because this might be the best thing you've done since March. Hopefully that's not the case, but uh, I will try to keep you interested. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are, have thought of a lot of cool ways to keep yourselves busy. My family in particular has been, we've been playing board games and, and kind of hanging out as a family. It's been nice having dinner as a family. Again, Daniel's home, my brother, and, and my sister's home, and having the whole family around during this quarantine is, is quite a blessing. So, Pastor Andy, glad to see you're watching. Carol, welcome, welcome. Glad you guys are here. Um, I suppose I, I should introduce myself. I don't know if there's any, any new faces out there if we haven't met yet. Um, if, if this is your first time in general at a, a Faith Church live stream, a very special welcome. Uh, my name's Rick Methvin. I am the uh, youth ministry intern at, at Faith Church in Belfont. I don't know if there are other faith churches around here, but the youth intern at Belfont, that's me. And I've been here for eight, eight or nine months, something like that. I'm doing a, a year-long internship here. Um, and that'll, that'll unfortunately be completed in August. I, I'm definitely going to miss working here. I, I've loved having this opportunity. Um, and I'll be going to school, if, if there is school in the fall to uh to grove city college representing here today um probably nobody from grove city is watching i'm sure but <laughs> I, I can always hope and uh i'll be studying i'll be doing i'll be on the path of ministry there so so pat yourselves on the back faith church i'm, I'm sticking with it and uh, i do appreciate all the time that that i've been able to to put in here and even opportunities like this one uh you know to to do something um, different from from the normal my youth group routine and be able to, to do a devotional um, for at least some of the the congregation um, and and work towards something like that so I am glad that you're all here um, some more people are, are getting on um, I do want to I will go ahead and start I have a, a story to share and if people are getting on in the middle of the story uh, they'll still understand the, the point of it it's, it's a little long but um, I was, I was trying to think of, of what to talk about for the devotion, and I wanted it to at least be relatable to, to our situation right now, our kind of our, our, our difficult, our tough, maybe, lifestyle. Um, and, and when I think of bad things happening to me, this is the story that I come to. It's just immediately what I think of, 
and hopefully you'll see why. Uh, hopefully you find it actually a little bit comical. I did not find it comical at the time, which is why I'm sharing it, but uh, hopefully you do find it at least a little bit funny. Um, I, my brother and my dad and I, we, we love, well, I'm gonna say we love to fish. My brother does not love to fish. He loves like the first 15 minutes and we just make him tag along. <laughs> but for the most part, the family, we like to fish. And we fish pretty often. And our favorite place to go is the, the Juniata River. And we have a canoe, so we take the canoe down the river and we fish along the way. And one particular time, we decided that we were going to camp out for the night on an island or on the shore or where, where we didn't really have a plan, uh, but wherever we could find to, to sleep for the night and then wake up the next morning and continue to fish. And so we took the canoe down and one, one important thing to remember about the, for this story is that our canoe it goes down the river like this. It, it flows down the canoe at, an, at a weird angle. And that is because I sit in the front and my dad sits in the back. And so the, the weight of the canoe is kind of tipped. And so we go down the river like this. Um, maybe it's more like this. Sorry, Dad. But um, <laughs> we go down the river at an angle, and that'll become important later. So we come up to this, this fast part at, at one point in our, our trip, and uh, these rapids, fast water. And we hit these, this fast water, and the waves or yeah, yeah, I guess waves, waves of water, splash up on the side of the canoe, right onto my lap. I, I was, I sit in the front, so I took the whole brunt of the wave, and it just landed right in my lap, and my pants were drenched, my, my pants were soaked, my underwear was soaked, my socks, my shoes were dripping wet, and I, I was absolutely miserable, miserable. It was not that warm of a day, so I was, I was also pretty cold at this point, and yeah, I was, I was not pleased about it. <laughs> and so we kept going and we, at the end of, of the trip, oh, sorry, important part. I had a sweatshirt that I packed because we were sleeping that night, it was supposed to be cold. I had a sweatshirt up in the front of the canoe and that stayed dry. That stayed dry and I was very happy about that. But the rest of me was soaked. Anyway, we pull over to the shore um, to sleep for the night and my dad grabs the back of the canoe as he's pulling it on the shore out of the water so that we have a canoe in the morning. And when he pulls it up, all of the water that splashed into the boat in the front and collected had gone to the back. And when he picked it up, all of it went to the front and absolutely drenched my sweatshirt. And I was not happy about this. I, I mean, my, my sweatshirt was dripping wet. I was wringing it out. Uh, it was literally under a puddle of water when I pulled it out of the front of the canoe. Uh, it was so soaked. And I knew it was going to be cold that night. And so I, again, was not pleased. And things are just kind of going from bad to worse. And so finally, well, I, I hung it over the, the fire and it still didn't dry. But finally I gave up and I decided I was going to hang up my hammock. And my dad was hanging his up uh, a little bit further up the hill. And he yells down to my brother and I, he says, boys, be careful because I was trying to hang my canoe in this tree and there's poison ivy all over. And there's poison ivy everywhere along the ground. And so I, okay, dad, yeah. I, <laughs> I kept hanging my, my hammock and I don't know at what point, but I, I looked up and my hands were in just a, a bush of poison ivy on this tree. And they were all over the vines and my hands were on my face at, at some point and I was, you know, handling my hammock and I was, I was just so worried that I was going to get poison ivy because I was going on vacation the next day for a week and a half. And so it, if you're joining halfway through, the, the summary so far is that everything is going bad to worse during this night. And so I actually, I, hopefully this isn't too much information, I, I had to bathe in the river to get the oils, the poison ivy oils off of my skin. And we happened to have a bar of soap that we planned on using to wash our hands um, so that we could eat, which we did not eat because we planned on eating the fish that we caught. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so we didn't have dinner. And I didn't pack any extra sandwiches or anything. So I was starving. All my clothes were soaked. I was freezing cold from that water. It was so cold. And I finally lay in my hammock and mosquitoes are biting my arms 
I'm just absolutely miserable. And I finally get to a point where I'm about to fall asleep. And thank goodness, because that just, it puts an end to it. And I did not fall asleep because we heard this rumble. This rumble was coming. It got louder and louder. Whatever it was, it was moving. And in a matter of time, a train blew behind us. There was a train 15 yards from where we were sleeping. It was up in the, it was up on a hill, so we didn't know that the track was so close to us. We knew that there was a train along the river, but we didn't know it was that close. So we picked a horrible spot. And I don't know if you've ever tried sleeping 15 yards from a train track that has a train every 30 minutes, but if you have, you did not sleep because I did not get a wink of sleep that night. And I was just, I remember so vividly being on the ground, on the rocks on my side, curled up as, using my hammock as a blanket, which was cold and wet as it was, beside the fire, which was dying because we didn't have any kindling and there was poison ivy all around. And I was absolutely miserable. And I remember I was just praying. I was begging God to just bring the sun up to end the night, just finish it. I, I was so done with the, this night. I was in such a horrible mood. And eventually, as, as you know, the sun did come up and uh, we got up in the morning and we, we went back out on the river to, to fish again. And I'll, I'll never forget, mostly because I have a picture. Um, it's, I actually have the picture. I'll show it for you guys. But most beautiful picture I have on my phone probably. Um, and when the sun came up, the mountains were on either side. And we were on the water. And the water was just glistening. And the fog was coming up. And there was this orange hue. And I just remember looking at it. And, and here's a picture of it, actually. Hopefully you can see that. Anyway, if you can't see it, trust me, very pretty, very pretty picture. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is, this is gorgeous. This, this is God. What I'm looking at, God created this. And I hadn't thought about it until I started preparing for this devotion. But I thought how beautiful, not, not an image, but how beautiful of a picture is it that the sun comes up after all that. It's something that I think we take for granted we don't think about it like how wretched the night can be. And then we can count on the sun rising in the morning. Now, I want us to, to keep that in mind as we go throughout our, our devotional here. And for those of you that maybe joined late, um, I had a really bad night and the sun came up in the morning and we're kind of kind of use that, that imagery to, to go on throughout the devotion. Um, I, I do want to switch gears a little bit and read from, from Psalm 46. And this is what it says. It says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. That's Psalm 46, 1 through 3. And isn't that just a beautiful thing to hear right now? In, in the midst of as, as the psalm, psalmist puts it, a roaring sea that our, that our nation is facing right now. How beautiful is it to hear that, those verses? Specifically, God is our refuge and our strength and a very present help in trouble. And, and one thing I love, and notice, it doesn't say that, that God is helpful after the trouble is over. It doesn't say that, that God's, trouble, or God's helpful when the trouble is done. God is with us. He's a present help in the trouble. And I just think that's, that's a beautiful picture. I, I was listening to a sermon one time, and I wish I could, I could say who the pastor was, but I don't remember. I, I remember writing this down, though. And he said, sometimes we'll never know that God is all we need until God is all we have. And that when we hit rock bottom, we discover that God is the rock at the bottom. And I, I heard him say that, and it just stuck with me. How, how reassuring is it that God is the foundation? And last Sunday, we, we sang a couple songs um, that claimed that, that God is that rock, and God is the foundation, and it's the truth. Because notice, we can, we can fall until we hit rock bottom. Once we hit rock bottom, it's the bottom, and there's nothing left. And God, as the analogy puts it, God is that rock. When we're at the bottom and, and everything else seems to fail us, we notice that, that one thing remains, 
And it's God's love for you and for me. It's something to lean on, and it's something worthy of praise. And part of it is because it's constantly there. It's amazing to me that even when the, the rug is swept out from under us, God is the floorboards that keeps us from sinking. And when we seem alone, when we feel alone, and thank goodness that even when we try to be alone, God is there and God is making himself present in our lives. I want to look back again at, at that psalm, at Psalm 46, and look at this particular part. We will not fear though the earth gives way. I, I love how it says, we will not fear. Um, a verse that I had recently memorized was, was Joshua 1.9, which says, Do not fear, do not be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you. And this verse says, we will not fear. And that's just so powerful to me. As if to say that when our minds are focused on God, there is no room for fear. There's no fear to even experience. And I think a part that, that really makes this clear is, is just the end of that verse, verse 3. God, I'll read the whole thing. Uh, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roam, or, sorry, roar, roar and foam. I'm going to read that again because I completely botched it. <laughs> though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved to the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. And I, I picture this and I imagine myself walking, walking through my kitchen and looking at this, this scene, this exact scene from like my back window and potentially wetting myself because that's a scary thought. That is something to be fearful of. And yet right before that, the verse says, we will not fear. It doesn't say, try not to fear. It says we will not fear. And this is so hard for us to imagine, I think, because it takes two things. It takes trust and it takes faith that Christ is alongside us. And I, I hope you can relate this to, to our current situation that our nation and our world is facing. We get very caught up in, in all the problems, you and me both. We get caught up in the problems that are all around us and we tend to, to lose our focus. And maybe this is, this is us right now. Um, I know Andy's watching. He'll like hearing this. Um, I, I do remember a, a sermon that, that Andy gave uh, a while ago. I don't remember when it was. And I remember him talking about the, the science or whatever behind the brain and how the brain literally cannot focus on one thing and another thing at the exact same time. And, and that, that stuck with me. And I think it relates to this here. If we're so focused on, on everything that's going on in the world around us, maybe we, we listen to the news, we, we hear the media talking about this, this virus spreading, and even if it's not the virus, it's something going on in your life, if we're focused on that, we're not directly focused on God. And that's where our eyes, our hearts, and our minds need to be. So we want to begin to, to set our lives on God's love. And like Andy said this Sunday, God's in control of the situation. It's easy to forget that God has power over this. And focusing on loving him and loving others and trusting him is the control that we do have and we need to take advantage of. Now, if you just got on, I, I shared a story at the beginning of a, a treacherous night where I was, I was soaked and I was camping outdoors. I was sleeping alongside a river and I, was, I got poison ivy. Um, all over me and I was getting eaten by mosquitoes and it was freezing and there was a train that kept me awake. It was a terrible night and I talked about the, the sun coming up and how beautiful it was and how it, it just reminded me of God's presence. And going back to that, in our current situation, the sun's going to rise. <laughs> I, I hope that you can remember that. Um, but also, it's not in our timing. It's in God's timing. And so we need to have some patience as well. That, that night that I was in my hammock along the shore, or on the ground along the shore, I was just looking up at the sky, praying that the night would end, and I was awake for hours. I could not sleep. That night felt so unbelievably long. Um, but I don't, have, I don't have pictures 
of my wet pants. I don't, I don't have pictures of my mosquito bites. I don't have, thank goodness, I don't have pictures of me bathing in the river to get poison ivy oils off of me. I have pictures of the sunrise. And that's, that's what we need to dwell on. Uh, you and me both uh, in, this, in this situation to dwell on those, those sunrises, if you will, that are going on. And this is my challenge for all of us. Instead of thinking about how that story went where I was waiting for one sunrise at the end of all this, and maybe if I'm to relate it to the virus, the end of the virus, instead of looking for that sunrise, I would hope and I would challenge you to, to try and think about the different sunrises that are happening during this quarantine and look for, for multiple ones because God, God is blessing us among this quarantine. I mean, again, God is in control. And if we can find things to be happy about and consider ourselves blessed for, we, we can celebrate them. And I think that should be, that should be our goal. And then we can, we can trust that God is going to deliver us from fear and we can set our eyes on him because he's, he's present with us in this situation. He's not coming when it's over. He's here with us now. And that he will continue to show his mercies. He will continue to be that present help. And I hope that you guys can remember that. And for myself as well, it's something that we all have trouble with in this, in this scenario. Our, our struggles distract us, but I would like us to, to allow those struggles to in some way display God in all of this. Would you pray with me? Lord, I just I thank you and praise you today that, that you are in control. And we, we just thank you for for having that power over, over this situation, Lord. And I thank you that you're a God that, that can be our foundation. You're a God that, that we can trust and that we can lean on and that we can come to in, in the worst of our struggles. Lord, I thank you for being there. And I pray, my prayer today is just that, that we would remember this so that we can learn to trust and love you more. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. I hope that, uh, that you guys got a lot out of this. Um, thank you all that, uh, that were here. Um, if you, I believe that the, that the live stream will remain on Facebook, so feel free to, to share it with anybody. And uh, God bless. I hope that, uh, that we could see you Sunday for the church live stream. Thanks again, everybody. See if I could figure out how to turn this off. <laughs>